So, uh, yes, June 11th. So I'm guessing we're on page 15? Yes. Okay. So we're supposed to read Ephesians 2, 1 through 10. Once again, have the students, audience, um, color draw a circle around every occurrence around the word you, we, and us. And every reference to Paul and the recipients whom include with him himself also put a heart over every uh, occurrence of the word love in cloud around every occurrence with the phrases with him and in Jesus Christ. Okay. So Ephesians 2, 1 through 10. Uh, and you were dead in your tr- trespasses and sins in which you uh, formerly walked accordingly to, to the uh, course of his, this world according to the prince of the power of the sin and the spirit is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them, we too all formerly lived in the last of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even with even at the rest. But God, being rich in his mercy, because of his grace, his great love, which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised up with him, and seated us with him to the heavenly places in Jesus Christ, so that the day, so that in the ages to come, he might show his surpassing riches of his grace, and kindness towards us in Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in in them. Did I go too fast? So what do you learn from marking every reference to you, us, and we? Or you, we, and us? That we are his, uh, the recipients of of all of God's love and forgiveness and mercy and grace. Okay. That's all about us. Right. All for us. We are his workmanship. Even though we messed up, he still loves us. Crickets. I think I'm more awake than you guys are. <laughs> Anyone else have anything to add? So, how about this one in, in verse uh, 5? Even when we were dead in our transgressions, that means when we're, what this means is that when we were, when we were in sin, when we were walking away from God, when we were dead in our transgressions, that means uh, when I was uh, before I came back here to Alredo, uh, I always was kind of growing up in the, in the in the church atmosphere, and uh, I guess when I was in Alredo, we'll give you guys a little background history about myself. Um, I wouldn't. I wasn't walking the walk and talking the talk. Matter of fact, I was like so far the opposite way I am now. Uh, even though I try, I still fail today. So I'm not perfect in any way. Don't get don't get the wrong. But I was. Um, I didn't want to go to sleep because I didn't want to wake up the next day. 
That's how far gone I was. So that to me, that I was dead in my transgressions. I just I was I was drinking a lot. I didn't I was partying a lot. Um, I was so far gone. But when I stopped doing all that stuff and when I became a Christian again, or I, you know, accepted Christ again, I uh, that hope came back. And I don't know if you guys can realize that was the verse that stuck out to me. Because even though that I was so far gone, that I'm now alive again. And it's just, that's the verse that stuck out to me a lot. Because um, that I did, I messed up quite a bit. Uh, I still mess up, but not to that extreme. But it was, it was a dark time for my life. So that's the verse that stuck out to me. So that even though that I was going to 180 just to run as far away as possible he still loved me he always waits for us to come back yeah even though I was still didn't, he still loved me through the whole whole time he never stopped loving me so that's what I got so what did you learn about God from Ephesians 2 uh, 4 through 6 besides what I said <laughs> Does anybody else read two through four through six? You know, he's always had mercy on us. He's loved us from the beginning. Right. And even when we turn our backs and wander away, he always lets us come back. He knows when we're going to come back. Yeah. According to the verses you just read from the Word of God, when did God love you? From the beginning. From the beginning. For all people whom God has saved, what state were they in and when He saved them? We were lost when saved us. During our transgressions. Because what I found out is that. I didn't need God until I realized how horrible what I was doing, and that's because, like, when I was when you're floating on top of the world, you're like, oh, I don't, I don't need this. But it's like when you're when you're struggling, when you need help, that's when you realize how much help you really need. On what basis did God save them? What does the what does uh, negate us on our on our part? By his grace and kindness. Because this is uh, in verse 8, it says, for, for by grace you've been saved through him, so that not of yourself is the gift of God, so no one can boast. You know, one can, no one can save themselves. I mean, I couldn't save myself. So if, if I can't save myself, how, how am I going to save anyone else? The only one that can save us is Jesus. With the grace of God, you, you yeah. have been saved. Though. Right. By the grace of God, it's a free gift. You can't earn it. You know, you can't. You know, you can't sell it. You can't do anything. It's yours. It's only. And here's, on a side note, is like when I when I was I do other studies on my own when I can, but it's like you know John three sixteen for God so loved the world that He gave His only only begotten Son. But it's like if you put, instead of the world, you put your name. See, the gift that he gave you is yours. Your gift, your gift, everybody's gift is theirs. It, the, it's not transferable. It is your gift. So he loved you. He gave you his gift. He loved you so much that he didn't, you know, it's not, it's not like just a blanket thing where it just, but it's, it's your gift. All I have to do is choose accept it. Okay, according to the Ephesians 2.10, uh, where were we created and what were, the, what were we created for? Who determines uh, what these are? God. 
Why don't you read uh, verse 10? You read, or let me read it for you. It's for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. So if God prepared these beforehand, this is kind of a predestination thing where he knew, he knew what you were going to do before you even did it. You know, he knew that today I was going to relate. He knew that uh, Danny would call me. He knew all this before even anything happened. So he knew the good works that you that he wants you to do, or you will do. Uh, finally, what would have happened in your life if you fully believed all you all you've seen these past two weeks? Uh, really believed, no matter what what you felt, no matter what others said about you, how secure do you think you would be? How do you think it would be? Uh, how do you think it affect your walk? So finally, what would happen in your life if you fully believed all you've seen these past two weeks, really believed, no matter what you felt, no matter what others said about you, how secure do you think you would be? How do you think it would affect your walk? Yeah. So, so basically the same thing. So when I'm out in the world, I should make Jesus look good. Yeah. So that way, you know what I mean? Right. So basically live through Jesus, for Jesus. Right. That's, that's, uh, that's one way. I, I guess when I read it, I read it a different way. Uh, but that is true. Uh, the way that I read, I think it's like how, how it will affect you. It's like if I, two weeks ago, well, I've, I've read this a lot longer than two weeks ago, but before I read this passage a long time ago, and after reading it again, every time you read something, it gives you a different insight on something. And the way that I read this is that it's like a reaffirmation, saying you are, if you believe in Jesus, you are Jesus, Jesus' uh, own, He's adopted us, as from a previous study, so that it's kind of like a gift. He's not, he's never going to take away from you. It's always there, and he wants he wants to love you so much that he's he's done all this stuff for you, and he's going to guide you and, and help you out any way he can. So, in my way, I see it. It's like a reaffirmation of his love and of his grace towards us. That's the way that I read it. Did anybody else hear anything different from this passage? Because I mean, um, Mr. Schinberg, Jason, right? Um, his input, my input. Everybody has their own take on everything. The word doesn't change, but how we read it may affect it when we read it another day. So if we read this tomorrow, we'll get something totally out of it because. It's the living word of God. It, 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 the word doesn't change, but how we perceive it changes. And that's what, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Gotcha. Anyone else have anything? Once again, uh, who don't let's see? Once again, why don't you continue reading Ephesians two one through ten uh, aloud at three different points in your day? Okay, three times during each time. Uh, begin your day with these with these truths, and let the last ones in your mind. Okay, am I reading this wrong? So begin your day with these truths, and let them be the last ones on your mind as you go to sleep. Talk to this uh, one and only one God that loves you 
faith, un uncomprehensible love, who offers you his extravagant, lavish grace right where you are. Next week, we'll look at the way the Heavenly Father expects life for his children to walk. Okay. I know we can't be done. Do we want to work to go to work three? Week three? Because I don't want you guys sent home early. That ain't going to work. That ain't going to happen. You guys are quiet. I guess because I'm not in the audience, that's why. In the first three chapters of Ephesians, Paul reminds the saints who are in Ephesus of their position in Christ. Now his letter takes a turn from doctrine to duty, from position to performance. How are those who have been saved by grace to live? Does grace give us a license to live any way we want? Or does this give us the power to walk as we ought to walk? How crucial is that our walk uh, marches or uh, matches our talk if we hear the name Christian and what is in, and uh, what if it doesn't? Okay, so I'm supposed to have the group watch for every uh, key repeated word that will show you uh, what these two chapters in Ephesians are about. So here uh, Ephesians 4 1 says, Therefore, I, the prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling in which you have been called. So if therefore I, the prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in the manner worthy of the calling in which you have been called. So Paul was a prisoner bound up, I'm not sure which uh, part of his captivity and how far this long was, um, but he there, he is, he's, in a, he's in a prison right now, so he's writing the people of Ephesus, and he says, hey, I'm, I'm locked up, I'm not really worried about being locked up, but I'm, I'm writing to you to which you will be, you're supposed to live this way because your acceptance of Jesus, so you're supposed to live this way accordingly to this way. Even though, kind of like a, I mean, I hate to say like a get out of jail free card, but if say by chance someone did give you a get out of jail free card, that doesn't mean that you should do whatever you can to get thrown into jail. It doesn't mean um, do whatever do whatever you want to. That's not the purpose of the card. The card is, is in case you do mess up, you're not going to be. But don't go out and purposely try to get yourself in trouble. Did, I, did anybody else get the same thing the way I got? So it's like if, if we are saved by grace, or we are, but I'm saying you are saved by grace, don't try to don't try to shake hands with the devil every time you have a chance to. You know? Right. Just because we're saved we shake right. hands with the devil. Right. Don't don't try to don't try to do whatever you want to uh, live the way you're supposed to. If you do mess up, which we all do, you know, just try not to. Okay. Um, so we hear, uh, so I, this, okay, so this I say and affirm together with the Lord that you uh, walk no longer just as the Gentiles also work in the, in the fertility of their mind. So the Ephesians are actually Gentiles. Anyone who's not a Jew is a Gentile. But when, when you're saved, you are adopted in the family of, of, uh, of all the, the Christians. Are all, we're all kind of 
adopted in the family. So the Gentiles he's talking about is anyone who's not a Christian, not a Jew, who uh, the pagans. Okay, back in, you know, they had the Roman Empire who had all these multiple gods. They had a god for this, a god for this, a god for this, a god for this. All they were were false idols, false, false teachings. So what he's saying is, is don't do what everyone else does just because that's what you're used to doing. Well, if it was, it was City of idol worshippers, that's where the temple of Diana thing was. Yeah. And so they had to get above that. They had to make them understand that that was what was wrong and that what Paul and the disciples and they were teaching from Jesus was the way. He was the light. He was the path that they needed to take. And that's Harder to do in a city right. that has a pagan temple in it, and it's also a booming uh, port city. So there's travelers and visitors and and all going on there too. All the influx of all the bad. And all the bad influences. See, I had also. Uh, uh, I don't mean to cut short. Um, if you're always doing the things you've done, that's all you know. So when you're trying something new, it takes a while for um, to to kind of uh, try to change your ways. If this is all you've known, that's kind of all you know, and it's, it takes a while to break off from that. Um, so like where I work at, we I've got a mix of different mechanics. We we teach at a vocational school, so. Some of us mechanics, who are now teachers, some of us were hourly rate employees, so we get along with, we get along, we share stuff. Some of us mechanics were what they call a flat rate, where if it takes you half an hour to put this part on this car, and if you beat that time, you get more money, you know, you get paid for whatever it takes. But if it takes you two hours to put this part on, it only pays for half an hour. So those people are less likely to help someone else. And even though we're no longer mechanics, the mindset is still in our head where you see which ones are trying to undermine everybody else and trying to get the better job, even though we all have the same job. And some of us are hourly. We're, we're hourly. We were kind of like treated differently when we worked, so we know, hey, let's help everybody out. And it's, I'm not going to try to take his job because that doesn't mean I have to work a double shift, and I don't want to do that. So it's kind of like when you're working, when you were in something for so long, so like that's, that's all you've known. You have to tr- you have to train yourself differently to get out of that mindset to be uh, to change your ways. That's what that's the way I I've get, gotten out of it. Anyone else? I mean, I'm, anyone else have anything to, I'm not going to bite your head off if you answer a question. You know, anyone else have any? Because I don't have all the answers myself. So, you know. I think this is called a discussion. I think it's what it was. Uh, now the uh, now that the key is repeated word in each passage, what is the key repeated word besides therefore? What else? The key word is walk. Yeah. Do with our walk with Christ and our walk with Christ in our life daily, our work, our family. Okay. What I got from the word walk, it's not when you walk with something, you're carrying it with you. Either in your hand or your backpack, in your head, on, on your head, like some people in the in the you know, throw a country jar, 
uh, you're carrying it with you. So whenever you're walking with something, you're there with it. It's not something you leave at home. It's not something you leave in your car. It's something in either in your back pocket, your hand, in your head, you're wearing it, something, you're walking with it. Either carrying it or it's carrying you. So that's when, when it's in your walk with Christ, you're actually walking with Christ. So if you're not walking with Christ, then you're walking without Christ. Okay? That's a good point. Thanks, sir. So draw a cloud uh, like this in the book around each occurrence, or uh, draw a cloud like this around each occurrence. Okay? Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us. An offering and a sacrifice as God as a fragrant aroma. So therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love just as just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us. An offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. Right. And uh, some people, it's hard to show love because some people don't know love. And those are the ones we need to show love to. You know, how can you love someone else if you don't love yourself? If you don't love yourself, then you have to find out why. Because even if you don't love yourself, God still loves you. So if you have a problem with with yourself, do some self, uh, I guess, self therapy to find out what what's going on with you. Because the, the I had a problem with this a long time ago. I hadn't didn't know how to love because every time I thought love was well, if someone loves me, they're gonna buy me something. If someone loves me, they're gonna do this for me. But that's not love. Love doesn't have to be. A physical, you know, a, a physical thing. If someone loves me, they're gonna buy me a brand new car. That's not love. Love is something more deeper than that. So this, this, the, when you realize how you love yourself, then you can accept the love, and then you can love other people. But that's the hardest thing that I I had to struggle with was that love. And I'm just being you know, being honest with you guys. So. Uh, what do you guys get from this? Anyone else? I want to pick on some people. Mm-hmm. Ricky, how how do you feel loved? Mm-hmm. How do you feel loved? How do I feel loved? Yeah. Uh, I feel loved. I feel like I'm loved through Jesus and everything. So. Well, I mean, but how do you how do you feel? I mean, how do you feel it? Do you, I mean, what? I mean, I know, I know you, I know you feel the love for Jesus, but how do you? What are some things that that, that excite you when you feel loved? Uh, when I come to church and everybody says, "We love you." Yeah, but you, you have that you have that warm feeling inside. Right. Yeah. That's that's how I feel love. You have that heart. You have that that heart feeling where yeah. you can't you can't buy that feeling. Right. But it's that feeling you get. When you have that, that warmth inside, knowing that someone cares about you. Right. That's in the heart and everything. So, sorry, maybe, maybe a trick question, but that's kind of what I was after. Yeah. So, i got to pick out people with good answers. Mm-hmm. There's different types of love. Yeah. Right. There's emotional love, there's physical love, there's love in your heart, love in your mind. Uh, I may love my husband different than I love my 
Yeah. And I love my sister. Yeah. But I love God on a spiritual level. Right. Which is much different than what I, how I love other pe- people in general. Right. So that to me is, is how you have different types of feelings. Um, right. And I said there is a different kind of there's, there is a different kind of love, but when I love somebody, I will do whatever I can for them. For that one person, and you know that that person, I mean, yeah. It's, if as long if, if you have to me, if you have God in your life and and you walk with Jesus every day, then you will always have love. Right. But it's realizing that He always will love you no matter what. Humans, on the other hand, will not always love you, no matter what. Yep. Um, they will, you know, humans turn their back on you. Humans uh, can cause pain and agony, where God will not ever do that. His love for us is unconditional, and He will always be there, and He will always love us. Right. So, you know, that their people will hurt you. So. Yeah. It's like if anybody loves me, I know that Jesus exactly. loves me. Exactly. I mean, I love Br- Ricky as a brother. Uh, I don't know him personally, so I don't know what kind of situation you know yeah. we would have. But until he does something to me that would cause me not to, that would hurt me as far as my emotional well-being goes, then I will always love him. You know, also when you love somebody, you'll do something whatever you can without expecting anything in return. in return. Exactly. When you do something expecting something in return, you're not loving somebody, you're working. Because we're expecting to get paid for it. Mm-hmm. And that's not love. Love is unconditional. Right. And doing whatever you can. So so like you know for and that's all, what the love of God is. Yeah. It's unconditional. I know he's there with me any time. I'm telling you hurt by something, I can always go to him and he says, well, you know, I'll always love you, no matter what. Yeah. Anyone else? Are you always back there in the back room? Don't pull a Steve and fall asleep. <laughs> for you, were formerly, uh, for you were formerly darkness, but now you are light of the world. Walk as children of light. So, there's a couple passages in there where uh, you are the the light of the world, you're you're a city on the hill. There's also, uh, don't let your light hide under a bushel basket. So the light we have is Christ in us. So don't let ourselves, with our light, don't hide our lives, don't let our lives hide from others. So whatever, uh, it's harder for me in some instances to let my light shine because of the people that I'm, that or in my school, they said you can't talk about this, you can't talk about that. But I can let my light shine without having to talk about it. Actions. Right. <clears throat> the way that I treat others, I don't have to. I don't have to say a whole lot. They'll say, "What's what's different with you than everyone else?" And that opens the door a lot of times, where even though they tell me I can't preach or anything like that. I will still put a little saying on the board, but I won't put where it's from. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just to give them a little, little tidbit. It's not that I'm not saying anything. You know, if anybody asks me, I'll be honest with you. But when they're saying that you can't talk about this, you can't talk about that, I'll still talk about it. But they don't know where it's from. So that may be something that will lift somebody up that day. Right. After a really bad day, if they read that one, those few words that you put on there, that may be their yeah their life to them. Because I put plenty plenty of stuff from Proverbs 
in Psalms on the board. Yeah, I have to put a, uh, some kind of quote for the day, mm-hmm. and I'll put some on the board. And it's a direct quote from Scripture, but they're like, "Well, that's a good saying. I've never heard that before." Yeah, and this, and it's like, even though I'm kind of getting a little snippet of it, it's not. I'm not. I'm not crossing the line from work, but at the same time, I'm trying to show people what I believe in. Exactly. And the other day, I had a, on my well, I got my two Facebook accounts. One is my personal, and one is my car. And I showed my guys my car one in class. And I just happened I happened to have on there that this, this Facebook page is dedicated to Jesus Christ. And I was showing them through my pictures, and I clicked that one for like a second, and I clicked on the other ones. But I didn't preach about it, but it was there. Everybody saw it, and I clicked on the next one. So, Who knows? Like, there may be somebody that needs a word and will come to you knowing that you are a believer yeah. and will pull you to the side and say, could you please help me or pray for me or whatever just from those little bit of snippets that you put out and I said by no means I'm, I'm, I'm not better than anybody else here and I don't want to I don't ever come across that way but as just they asked me to, to do this today and I, and I did so yeah so um, it's not about me so All right, uh, Ephesians 5 15 it says therefore be careful how you walk, not as a, a unwise men, but as wise. When I was, this is kind of a, a recurring theme I see in, uh, especially in, in the, let's see, uh, Ecclesiastes. We talk about fools and wise men. I said a fool will cause will call someone else a fool even though they say foolish things. So back in this time, it was wisdom was, was a key thing. If you're a wise man, then you were uh, uh, up higher on a higher level than anyone else. So for, for them to consider someone wise, that was, they're really uh, to be an example of, to be followed after, like a leader almost. So uh, be careful how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. Uh, I think a lot of times is is only one to keep your mouth shut, or one to speak. And sometimes that's something that I have a problem sometimes with doing. Sometimes I'll say the things I shouldn't say, and sometimes I, I don't say the things I need to say. But that's just uh, something I'm dealing with. But... So when you're walking as you should, be as wise uh, as you can. So what are some examples as being unwise with your walk? Being unwise. Yeah, being unwise. Losing your temper in front of a group of people or around others. That's the first thing they think of. Oh, she's supposed to be a Christian, or he's supposed to be a Christian. And listen to them. You know. Like telling someone they're number one on the highway. Yeah. Mhm. With the with the I love Jesus sticker on the back of your car. <laughs> yeah, that hap- uh I had a, a situation where someone pulled out. I was trying to make cross. Uh, the high, the where McDonald's is in Mansfield, and this person came down the street and cut me off, and happened this have a nice cross inside the car, and they was making that, but that wasn't wise, and it was unwise of me to say, hey, that's a nice cross you have in your car, you know, it was unwise. Two people unwise doesn't make the situation right, so something like that. How about being, you know, doing stuff you should be doing? You know, 
So those are some unwise things. I'm not going to get into. I'm not, I'm not here to judge anybody, but when you're doing stuff you shouldn't be doing, you know, that's not really quite the walk we should be having. Anyone else? Right. Oh, it's 1042. Okay, we're going to stop off on page, the bottom of 2020. Uh, do you guys want to close this? We want to close this out in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, thank you today for this discussion we've had. And Lord, not only do I I hear the words you have to say through your word, but also discussions from other people. And Lord, lift us up today to hear your word as we go into service today and bless us and, and, and watch over us for the week, Lord. And Lord, let us, let us grow in your word that we may be examples of you and that we may show your love and receive love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.